Chapter 8 Tommy Needs a Day Off Although his headache was gone by the time morning arrived, like he had predicted, Tommy was still exhausted for the entirety of the day after his run-in with Arson and Iceman. After waking up, he ended up explaining to Tubbo and Ronbu about how he'd gotten sick the night before while he was at the cafe. Before either of them could press him about that, though, he brought up how Nuke had walked him home, expecting to get some sort of big reaction out of the two of them that would distract them from asking any more questions. Suffice to say, the plan didn't exactly work. In fact, neither of them seemed all that surprised about Nuke walking him home. Both of them said it made sense, since he'd been seen patrolling their area before, and that it was nice of him to help Tommy get home. In all honesty, Tommy was a little offended on Nuke's behalf. If he had learned that Tubbo had been walked home by a vigilante none of them had met before, he would have certainly had a bit more of a reaction. But no, all his roommates wanted to talk about was if he knew what caused him to be sick, how he was feeling now and if he still planned on going to work that evening. Which, of course, he was. Just because he was tired, that didn't mean he could afford to take a shift off. Besides, while he was tired, he wasn't on the verge of passing out like he had been the night before. It was more like a lingering heaviness in his limbs that wouldn't go away. There was a bit of extra effort he needed to put into lifting his legs, a slight delay in reaction time between his brain and his hands, making it feel as though he was moving underwater. However, while he'd never exhausted himself this badly from healing someone before, he somehow knew that the lingering side effects were going to be gone the next day. Again, he could deal with a little fatigue. He wasn't going to be a pussy about it. Unfortunately for him, Puffy didn't exactly feel the same way. As soon as he walked into the cafe for his shift, he spotted Puffy sitting in the far back corner of the shop with Foolish working behind the counter. Before Tommy could walk over to the counter to put his apron on, though, Puffy waved him over. Late afternoon sunlight was spilling into the cafe, turning every inch of the shop into gold. The air was heavy with the rich scent of coffee beans, while the taste of sugar was heavy on his tongue, making Tommy wonder if Foolish had been baking pastries. Puffy was sitting with her back to the window, the sun illuminating the edges of her wild brown and white curls like a halo. Hi, Tommy, she said as he walked over to the table, gesturing for him to sit. Hi, Puff, Tommy replied, settling down awkwardly into the chair. Is everything all right? Oh yeah, everything's fine, Puffy told him, her smile almost as bright as the sunlight wrapped around her. I just wanted to check in with you since we haven't gotten a chance to talk much this week. You still all right with doing this many shifts a week? I can cut you down if you- No! Tommy cut her off, wincing when the sudden interruption made her flinch. Shit, sorry, I didn't mean to say it like that. But please don't cut down my hours, Puffy. I really need the money. It's okay, no need to freak out, Puffy reassured, reaching a hand out to rest it over his own. I can keep you on your current schedule. It's just, you look really tired, Tommy. I'm fine, Tommy said, using the hand Puffy wasn't holding to rub at his eyes. I just got shit sleep last night, but I'm totally fine, I swear. Are you sure? Because if you ever need someone to talk to, you know I'm here for you. Not just as a boss, but as your friend. Her tone was gentle, but firm, comforting yet solid in the way only Puffy could balance. It had taken a while for Tommy to trust Puffy. From the first day he came into her cafe with a wrinkled resume in his hand, pointing to the Help Wanted sign on the door with all the desperation of a nearly homeless teenager, she had always been kind to him. She heard him out when he had something to say, and seriously took his words into consideration. She would offer him extra food to take home at the end of every shift, giving calm reasons as to why he should take the food in a way that didn't make it feel like pity. Even so, Tommy fought tooth and nail against her kindness for the first month of working for her, desperate to not become another charity case. But Puffy didn't look down on him. She didn't see him as a poor kid that she just felt bad for. Puffy respected him, more so than any other adult he'd met up until that point ever had. So he knew that when she gave him that concerned look, it wasn't one born out of pity, but genuine worry. 
The way Puffy looked at Tommy always made something tight form inside of him, like there was a dam that was waiting to be released. He knew he could tell her secrets and she wouldn't betray him, but if he admitted one small thing, he was worried the rest was going to come spilling out along with it. Besides, Puffy probably wouldn't take too kindly to finding out Tommy had used her cafe as a makeshift clinic for two wanted villains the night before. She was understanding, but she wasn't a saint, even if she seemed like one more often than not. Thanks, Puffy. But I promise I'm okay, Tommy told her, fiddling with his hands in his lap. Puffy raised an eyebrow, and Tommy could tell she didn't believe him. Maybe he could tell her one part. Something small, not involving the villains, but enough to keep her from pushing further. Oh, okay, well, maybe there is one small thing. Tommy started, dragging his hands through his hair. Tobo and Ranboo have just been really weird lately. They're keeping all these secrets from me, and they're always out doing shit together really late at night. It's just bugging me a lot, I guess. It's making it a bit hard for me to sleep. Oh, Tommy, Puffy murmured, squeezing his hand. Have you tried just asking them outright what's going on? Tommy snorted. Well, I did, and first Tubbo told me he couldn't tell me yet. Then later on they told me it was because they were getting goddamn married for tax benefits, but I don't think that was their real secret. Or at least not the entire thing, because they're still acting super fucking weird. Wait, they're committing marriage fraud? Puffy questioned. Tommy blanched. Uh, maybe forget I said that part. There was a beat of silence as Puffy stared at him, before shaking her head and laughing under her breath. <laughs> Guess that's not something I really want to know about, she muttered, smiling at the table. Then, her smile faded as she met Tommy's eyes again. But you don't have any idea what this other secret they're hiding from you might be? Tommy shook his head, and Puffy sighed. Well, if you've asked, and they won't tell you what's going on, they probably have a reason for keeping it from you. As hard as it is, Tubbo and Rambu are your best friends. They wouldn't be keeping secrets to purposely leave you out. I'm sure you just need to give it time, so they can tell you about it when they're ready. Sighing, Tommy sank down in his seat. Great. Just gotta keep doing what I've been doing this entire time. I know it's hard, but try to be patient with them, Puffy told him squeezing his hand one more time before pulling away. And please try to get more sleep. You really look awful today. Excuse you. I'm always extremely desirable to my many wives. Puffy snorted. Oh yes, I forgot. Who needs beauty sleep when you have so many wives? Exactly. Now I know you're still in the market for a wife. I'm what? And I can give you so many tips on how to get all the ladies. I'm the master at it. Tommy told her, smirking at her from across the table. I appreciate the support, but I'm not exactly looking for a wife right now, Puffy explained, struggling to hold back her giggles. Oh, come on now, what about Foolish? Tommy exclaimed, gesturing to the counter where Foolish was blending a frappe. Now you are a fantastic father, don't get me wrong, but the poor child needs a mother. Tommy, Foolish is an adult. Puffy pointed out with a raised eyebrow. Tommy faked a horror-filled gasp. And because he's an adult, he no longer needs his parents? I thought you were a better father than that, Puffy. You're always telling me that you're a big man who doesn't need adults telling him what to do, Puffy argued. Yeah, well, I'm me, so of course I don't need parents or any of that shit. But poor Foolish deserves a mother, Tommy exclaimed. Puffy laughed again, and Tommy beamed having always enjoyed hearing Puffy's laugh. It was one of those really nice laughs, the ones that weren't too dainty, but weren't too harsh either. It was genuine and hearty, making anyone around want to join in, even if they didn't know what the woman was laughing at. I appreciate the concern. I'll get right on searching for a wife. Puffy grinned, leaning back in her seat. While I set up a dating profile, though, you should probably go get behind the counter. Foolish's friend just arrived, so I think he probably wants to head out. She pointed to the front of the store, where a rather tall person was waiting by the doors. They had dark curls that almost reached their shoulders, 
and they were wearing a rather nice blazer and pants with a ridiculously tall pair of boots. Along with that, they had a pair of dark sunglasses covering their eyes, and Tommy wondered if they were only wearing those because of the setting sun, or if it was more of a permanent fashion statement. All right, yeah, I'll get on it, Tommy muttered, pushing to his feet and heading towards the counter with his backpack hanging off one shoulder. When Foolish noticed Tommy heading his way, his grin was almost as bright as the golden streaks in his hair. About time you got done talking to my mom, Foolish teased, yanking his apron off and throwing it into Tommy's face. Did she try to get you to take less shifts? Tommy rolled his eyes. Yep, but I convinced I needed them. Told her you wouldn't budge, Foolish snorted, rinsing his hands in the sink as he and Tommy switched places behind the counter. Uh, so that cup over there is the start of an iced caramel macchiato? Also, the honey is being a bitch today, so you might want to run the bottle under hot water before trying to use it. Got it, thanks, Tommy said as he shoved his backpack under the counter with his foot, while tying the apron around his neck. Who's your friend, by the way? I don't think I've seen them here before. Oh, that's Eret. They're an old friend of mine. We go way back. Foolish chuckled, jerking his thumb in their direction. Anyway, I'll see you later, Tommy. Later. Tommy called back as he picked up making the caramel macchiato where Foolish left off. As he pulled the shots, he saw Foolish head over to the table where Puffy was to give her a quick hug, before throwing his arm over Eret's shoulder and leading them out of the cafe. As Tommy settled into the routine of his shift, he wondered if Wilbur was going to come by today. While Wilbur tried to stop by whenever he could, it wasn't always a daily thing. Tommy didn't know what his job was, but it certainly seemed to keep him busy, considering how he was working on his laptop nearly every time he came into the cafe. He considered that Wilbur could be in business, but the mental image of Wilbur wearing a suit and debating things like stocks and shit made him want to laugh out loud. Either way, Tommy wasn't all that surprised when Wilbur didn't show up to the cafe that evening. It was probably for the better anyway, because Wilbur would definitely notice Tommy's exhaustion and probably question him about it. Puffy left the cafe a little after sunset, telling Tommy she had left a Tupperware container of food in the back room to be his dinner. He thanked her and promised her he would eat it, and went about the rest of his shift trying not to groan every time a new customer came in. It was a quiet evening, made all the more slow without Wilbur's presence, but Tommy was grateful for the relaxed pace due to his fatigue, although he felt a lot better at the end of his shift than he did when he first got there. Grinding beans brewing dark roasts, steeping tea. The motions were simple and routine as the evening played itself out. When the last customer left the shop, Tommy breathed a sigh of relief. Finally, he could go home and sleep off the rest of this exhaustion. He checked his phone while cleaning up the day's work. There were no texts from any unknown numbers, which he was very thankful for. If he had to heal another person that night, he definitely would throw up again and wasn't eager to repeat that experience. Once the cafe was clean, Tommy turned off the lights and headed out the front door. His hands weren't shaking this time as he twisted the key in the lock, and he silently hoped there wasn't going to be a surprise visit from another vigilante. Hi, Tommy. Freezing, with his hand on the key, Tommy took a slow breath as he tried to psych himself to turn around and deal with whatever new bullshit was about to happen this time. Shoving the key in his pocket, Tommy turned around and was met with the blindfolded gaze of Siren. Well, at least it wasn't a vigilante. Now what the fuck do you want? Tommy asked, without preamble. It had been ages since he'd last seen Siren, and in that time frame he'd had to deal with Blade, Zephyrus, Arson, and Iceman. All because Siren had thought it would be a good idea to give his information out as if he was a service to be hired. Oh, he had some words for the villain standing in front of him. Hey now, why so hostile? Siren asked, seeming confused. I thought we left off on good terms. Tommy rolled his eyes. Yeah, that was before the Blade and Zephyr showed up at my front door because you gave them my fucking address. He snapped, leaning against the doors to the cafe with his arms folded over his chest. Siren grimaced and awkwardly reached a hand up to fiddle with the ends of his hair. Ah, uh, shit. Yeah, I did do that. 
It was just stupid luck that my roommates weren't home when that happened. Do you have any fucking clue how bad it would have been if they'd seen Blade and Zephyrus there? I mean, do you think they would have turned them in? Siren asked, lips turned down in a frown. I don't fucking know, but that's not the point, Tommy exclaimed. The point is that I don't want my roommates to get involved in this shit. I didn't want to get involved in your world in the first place, but obviously that's too late now. The least I can do is make sure the two of them don't get dragged in with me. The more Tommy spoke, the angrier he got. The frustration he'd had towards Siren had been building inside of him for the past few weeks, and that, combined with the fatigue still weighing down his limbs from the night before, had a bad combination for his temper. Siren was obviously taken aback by Tommy's anger. Shit, dude, I'm sorry. Seriously, I just... Siren paused, tugging at his hair. I wouldn't have told Blade and Zephyrus about you if Zephyrus hadn't gotten hurt. I just wasn't in a place where I could go help them, and Blade called me telling me Zephyrus hurt and that they weren't going to be able to make it back home, and I... Another pause. I panicked. He finished in a weak voice. Tommy narrowed his eyes at him. So, you hadn't been planning on making me your personal healer after I saved your life that night? No! Siren barked. I swear it wasn't like that. I just knew Zephyrus was hurt and wasn't able to help, so I thought of you. He sounded genuine. And truth be told, Tommy knew it didn't matter all that much at this point anyway. He was involved now and after talking to Arson the night before, he knew it wasn't something he could just stop doing. Tommy had a right to be pissed at Siren, but he was tired, and really didn't want to have a screaming match with a supervillain in front of his place of work. Then why are you here? he asked instead. I heard what you did for Iceman yesterday, Siren told him. You saved his life. All of us that are friends with him deeply appreciate that but I wanted to apologize because Blade had no right to give your phone number to Arson without asking you first. And the only reason he knew who you were in the first place was because of me. So it's my fault you were dragged into this at all. I know that's not what you wanted, and I'm genuinely sorry for that. Well, that was pretty much exactly what Tommy had wanted to hear from Siren. All the anger left his body in one rush, making his shoulders drop and a scowl fade. I appreciate the apology, but it's fine. What's done is done, and I'm glad I was able to help Iceman, Tommy said. And honestly, I had a feeling giving my number to the Blade was going to lead to something like this, so I'm not really that upset about it. I've basically made peace with it. Siren's frown turned into something sadder. You don't have to say it like that. If you don't want to do this, no one's going to force you into it. Tommy snorted. Don't think the Blade would agree with that, but all right. Don't worry about the Blade, Siren said, his voice hardening. If he gives you any trouble, I'll handle him. Oh, well, that was good to know. But even with Siren giving him an out, Tommy had already made his decision. Yesterday, when I was healing Iceman, Arson and I had a talk. Tommy began, eyes falling to the ground. And she explained how when villains like you guys get hurt, there's no one you can turn to. If I hadn't been around yesterday, Iceman would have died. So are you saying this is something you want to do? Siren asked. Or is this a guilt trip? Because you shouldn't feel guilty for anything. You have no obligation to help us. We've been taking care of ourselves for a long time before you came along. I want to do it because it's the right thing to do. Tommy said evenly, staring at the place on Siren's blindfold where he guessed the man's eyes would be. I don't know why you're trying to talk me out of this. I thought you'd be happy to hear you get to have a healer on call for you and your friends. Sighing, Siren shuffled over to the doors of the cafe and leaned against them so that his and Tommy's shoulders brushed. I am grateful, don't get me wrong, but you're... you shouldn't be caught up in something like this. You're a kid. You should be able to keep living a normal life without worrying about all the stupid shit we villains get ourselves into. Why the hell do you care so much? Tommy asked, frowning at Siren. We've only met twice, 
It's not like you know me or anything. There was a moment of silence. A siren stared at him, a strange weight settling in the air between them. It was as if Siren wanted to say something, but couldn't seem to make the words come out of his mouth. Finally, Siren shook his head. Sorry. I guess you just remind me of someone I know, he muttered. Tommy wasn't sure how to respond to that, so he stayed silent as Siren scratched his chin in thought. There was another beat, and Siren's shoulders slumped. Fine. If you're absolutely sure that you want to help, then you should probably get properly introduced to everyone. Tommy frowned. What do you mean? The syndicate is having a meeting at the end of the week. You can come to it, and we can work out the details of our arrangement with you. Like payment, how we can contact you, things like that. Wait. Siren wanted to bring Tommy to a syndicate meeting? At this point... Tommy shouldn't really be intimidated at the idea of meeting with supervillains face to face, considering it's happened multiple times already. But there was a difference between meeting a villain that's desperate for help, and willingly walking into a meeting room full of the most dangerous people in the city. So what, it'll be like you, me, Blade, and Zephyrus? Tommy asked, fighting to maintain his casual facade. Siren chuckled. Actually... The Syndicate isn't just me, Blade, and Zephyrus, like you're led to believe. We're just the only ones who refer to it publicly. Wait, who the hell is in it, then? You'll see, if you come to the meeting, Siren said, smirking at him. So what do you say? Are you in? Tommy took a shaky breath as he thought it over. Going to a Syndicate meeting. That was a lot to agree to. I'm going to be safe, right? Even if I want to back out, I can still go back home and no one will fuck with me? Siren's smirk fell, and he stepped around so he was face to face with Tommy. Nothing, and I mean nothing, is going to be a danger to you if you go to that meeting, Tommy. Siren told him in a low voice. I swear on my own life that you will be safe, and if anyone tries anything, I'll handle it. There was something dark in Siren's voice when he said, I'll handle it. Something that made a shiver run down Tommy's spine as he remembered exactly how dangerous Siren was. Okay. Tommy nodded. I believe you. This time, when Siren smiled, it wasn't a smirk, but something more genuine. In a way, it was almost familiar. Siren opened his mouth to say something else, but another voice interrupted them. Get away from him, Siren. Both Tommy and Siren whipped their heads to the source of the voice, and Tommy cursed under his breath when he saw Nuke and Ender standing on the sidewalk in front of the cafe. Nuke looked exactly as he had the night before, his arms crossed and gas mask hiding the entirety of his face. Beside him, Ender was an even more imposing figure than he appeared on TV. He was ridiculously tall, as Nuke had said and had a dark hood covering most of his head. The part of his face that was visible was covered by a pair of dark purple ski goggles with a black and white face mask over his mouth. Not to mention, there was something that was inherently off about Ender. It was difficult to look at him directly. Purple particles floated around his head, and trying to stare at him made Tommy's eyes hurt in the same way that watching TV static did. He was a bit fuzzy, as if he wasn't fully there. Either way, Tommy was not happy about this development. Vigilantes were exactly the opposite of what he needed when he was trying to work out a business deal with a supervillain. Oh, great, it's you two. Siren grumbled, turning around to face the two of them while still standing in front of Tommy. I'm not looking to cause any trouble tonight, so you can both just head on out of here before I make you. Neither Nuke or Ender seemed phased by the threat, we don't want to make this a big deal either. Just let the boy go and we'll be on our way. Ender said in a deep, flat voice. Let him go? I'm not holding him hostage. Siren explained, sounding almost amused. A bit hard to believe. Nuke commented, his tone casual, despite the fact that he was shifting from foot to foot. What, you expect us to think you're just having a friendly chat with some random kid? Okay, Tommy had had enough of this. For fuck's sake, I'm not a fucking kid, 
Tommy exclaimed, drawing all eyes to him. Nuke, Ender, I appreciate the concern, but Siren's not lying. Nuke stopped his shifting. Wait, what? Yeah, I'm not a hostage. We were just... Shit, how did he explain what he was doing with Siren without telling the vigilantes they were working together? Having a chat? Why were you having a chat with Siren? Ender asked, his voice dripping with suspicion. And how do we know he hasn't just used his power to make you say you're not a hostage? Nuke added. Tommy blinked. How the hell would I even prove that? I'm not a fucking hostage. Siren just owes me a favor. While Tommy would really just like to forget about the favor thing entirely, he knew that the two vigilantes understood the favor code that existed among the hero-villain-vigilante population. If they knew a favor was involved, Nuke and Ender would also know that Siren had no intention of hurting him. Then, hopefully, they would back off. Why would Siren owe a civilian a favor? Ender questioned. That's none of your business. Siren growled, cutting in again. When there's an innocent civilian being cornered at night by a supervillain, it kind of is our business. Nuke countered. I don't care if there's a favor involved. Back the fuck off. Things were escalating, and Tommy was getting nervous. He could see how Siren's lips had twisted in a grimace, while Nuke's hands were clenched into fists at his sides. If Tommy looked close enough, he also thought he could see a faint yellow glow starting to shine from Nuke's palms. Shit. That couldn't be good. Apparently Siren noticed Nuke's hands as well, because he let out a harsh laugh. What are you going to do, Nuke? Gonna blow up the innocent civilian you're trying to protect? Siren asked in a mocking tone. Not exactly, Nuke replied. Then, before Siren could respond, Ender disappeared from sight in a flurry of purple particles. Suddenly, Tommy felt rough hands grabbing him, yanking him backwards from Siren. It was like Tommy was falling. His stomach swooped as the world went dark one second and reappeared in the next. His vision spun as he stumbled, glancing around to realize he was standing across the street from the cafe where Nuke and Siren were still having a standoff. Ender was grabbing onto his arms. Snarling, Tommy shoved the vigilante back. Get the fuck away from me, asshole! Tommy shouted. Ender didn't chase after Tommy as he rushed back across the street, instead just watching with his hands frozen midair, as if he was at a loss for what to do. Similarly, Nuke didn't make any moves to grab Tommy as he stumbled back into Siren's side, leaning in when Siren wrapped an arm protectively around his shoulders. In a blink, Ender reappeared next to Nuke, and the glowing in Nuke's hands immediately died down. What the hell's the matter with you? Tommy hissed, glaring at Ender. What makes you think you can just grab a guy and teleport him without warning him first? Consent, asshole, it's a thing. I I'm sorry, I just thought... I told you, idiots, I'm not a fucking hostage. Tommy hissed, his head still spinning from the teleportation. Ender curled in on himself, as if he was embarrassed. Meanwhile, Nuke's shoulders stiffened. So you're working with him, then? Nuke asked, his voice lacking the teasing warmth it had had the night before. What the- No! I'm not working with a goddamn supervillain! Tommy exclaimed. He owes me a favour, and that's that. I'm not going to tell you why, but trust me when I say I know he's not going to do shit to me. So can you please, for the love of fuck, leave us alone? Nuke and Ender shared a look. Even without being able to see their faces, it was obvious that they were both very confused by the situation. Tommy couldn't blame them. He knew that to an outsider... Seeing a random teenager talking to a supervillain in the middle of the night didn't exactly imply the best things. But now he kind of felt like throwing up because of Ender's stupid teleportation, so the only thing he wanted at the moment was for the two vigilantes to get away from him. A few beats of silence hung heavily in the air between the four of them. Before Nuke and Ender could make a decision on what to do, though, Siren's hands came up to cover Tommy's ears. Both Nuke and Ender's hands moved towards their ears, presumably to cover them, but they weren't quick enough. Leave, Leave now. now. Tommy managed to lip-read from Siren's mouth. 
It was like watching two puppets be strung up. Both Nuke and Ender stiffened, their backs straightening as they turned on their heels without saying a word. Then, they walked the opposite direction of the cafe, and Siren dropped his hands from Tommy's ears once they were out of sight. As soon as they were gone, Tommy's shoulders dropped in relief. The absolute last thing he wanted to do tonight was have to heal more burn wounds, this time on Siren. The thought alone made his head throb. Are you okay? Siren asked, still keeping his arm wrapped around Tommy's shoulders. Yeah, I'm fine, Tommy mumbled, rubbing his eyes. That fucking teleporting shit and it does suck ass, though. Thought I was gonna throw up for a second. Well, to be fair, that would have been a good way to get Nuke and Ender off our asses. Siren chuckled. Tommy snorted. Oh yeah, I could have thrown up right on their shoes and turned into a Karen on them for being shitty vigilantes. I cannot imagine you as a Karen, Siren said. Oh, big S, I can be such a great Karen when I want to be. I work with Karens all fucking day. I've mastered their behavior at this point. Tommy bragged, smirking at the villain. One of these days you're going to have to show me your Karen impression, Siren chuckled. But while I'd love to stay and chat some more, I have some other business matters to attend to this evening. And you should probably get home before my power wears off and you can enter come back. I just hope they don't try to question me or anything because that'll be fucking annoying, Tommy grumbled, rolling his eyes. The smile faded from Siren's face at that. Look, I don't expect Nuke and Ender to do anything to you, but vigilantes can be volatile. If they start bothering you in any way that feels like it could be an actual threat, contact me, and I can take care of them. Tommy's eyes widened at the implication, a rock dropping into his stomach. You... you don't mean that you would kill them, do you? That would only be a last resort, but I don't think it would come down to that. Siren told him, which really didn't help the nerves clawing up his throat. I like vigilantes. They try to be what the heroes are supposed to be, so I try not to hurt them too badly whenever we get into fights. But if they were to ever hurt you, then I wouldn't hesitate to take them down. Siren was protective of him, even when it came to vigilantes. It shouldn't have been as much of a surprise as it was, given that Siren had already emphasized several times this night that he wasn't going to let anything hurt Tommy. But it was still strange to hear. Not to mention, he really didn't want anyone to get hurt because of him. Gulping, Tommy nodded. Um, all right, then, got it. It was then that another realization occurred to him. Wait, how am I supposed to contact you? Oh shit, I almost forgot. Digging into his pocket, Siren pulled out a cell phone. Usually I just use one of those fake number apps when I need to contact someone by phone, but if we're going to be talking to each other regularly, then I think we need an alternative. Tommy nodded. It made sense that Siren didn't want to give him his personal number. What do you have in mind? Do you have Discord? Siren asked. Huh. Discord. Siren was asking Tommy for his... Discord. You... You use a fucking Discord? Tommy barked out a startled laugh. Of all the things, Discord is going to be the way I secretly message a supervillain? What's wrong with that? Siren frowned. Nothing's wrong with it, it's just wasn't what I was expecting. Tommy said between giggles. I mean, Discord isn't exactly a professional app for this kind of stuff. Why don't you use something that's encrypted? Hackers could read your messages, you know. Siren scoffed. That's literally why we use it. No one is going to think that a supervillain uses Discord to talk about shit. And if they do hack our messages, they'll probably just think it's like those weird role plays people do on Twitter. Well, Siren had a point there. There was somewhat of a fan base for certain villains on Twitter that enjoyed role playing as the villains themselves which Tommy didn't understand in the slightest. Still wasn't as bad as those people who photoshopped flower crowns onto serial killers, but it had similar energy. Fair enough, I guess. Tommy snorted. Here's my tag. He held up his own phone to show Siren his user, and after a few moments of Siren typing it in, he got a friend request from someone with just the username Siren and a solid black profile picture. You're so fucking lame, man. Tommy muttered as he accepted the friend request, 
smirking at the villain. Shut up, gremlin child, Siren said, punching his arm. Anyway, I need to go now. Try not to die on your way back. Maybe I can VC while I walk, Tommy called teasingly. Use the rhythm bot to listen to some tunes together. Siren flipped him off as he walked away, his dark coats fluttering behind him in the breeze. Once he disappeared around the corner, Tommy turned towards his own apartment and headed off. The walk home was, thankfully, uneventful. He kept an eye out on the rooftops, watching for any flashes of movement against the dark stars to make sure Nuke and Ender weren't going to follow him back. He also kept his phone in his hand, thumbing over Siren's Discord profile in his phone. It was literally just the name and nothing else, but it was still hilarious to Tommy that he had one in the first place. Finally, he arrived outside his apartment building with half-lidded eyes and heavy limbs. The elevator ride was a haze as he stumbled to his door, this time having made sure to remember his key so he didn't have to deal with Ronbu getting the door stuck again. Tubbo and Ronbu were sitting in the living room when Tommy walked in. He grinned at both of them as he dropped his backpack on the ground. Hey guys, sorry I'm late again. I swear to fuck, that stupid espresso machine is going to be the death of me, he told them, knowing they were going to ask about his late arrival anyway. Where he expected Ronbu to give him a sympathetic smile and Tubbo to huff and roll his eyes before launching into a story about his day. Instead, he was met with sadness coloring Ronbu's gaze and coldness masking Tubbo's. That sucks. Tubbo said, in obviously fake sympathy, something angry curling around his voice. Seems like that espresso machine breaks a lot. Uh, yeah, it does. Tommy muttered, squirming underneath the heavy stairs directed his way. I keep telling Puffy we should get a new one, but she insists it's fine. Guess you really should, Tubbo hummed, glaring at him while leaning back in his desk chair. Rambu still hadn't said anything and was now instead keeping his eyes focused on his lap. Tommy frowned. Is something wrong? You two are acting weird. Oh, nothing's wrong, Tubbo scoffed. Nothing at all. What the fuck? Tubbo was clearly pissed at him for some reason when just a few hours before he'd been excitedly rambling to Tommy about his latest coding project and how cool it was going to be. Ranbu? Tommy asked, turning to the other boy. Can you tell me what the fuck's going on? Ronbu flinched, as if he had been called on in class by a teacher without warning. I, I mean, um, you do say the espresso machine breaks a lot, Ronbu said quietly, wringing his hands in his lap. It just, it, it feels like you're hiding something from us. Shit. He should have known his best friends would be able to tell he was lying to them. They could read him better than anyone else. But it's not like he could tell them what was going on with him in the syndicate. It was his job to keep them away from that whole mess, not to mention it would probably make them both worried sick. Even worse, if they found out he was working with villains, they might try to turn the villains in. They would never turn Tommy in, he wasn't afraid of that. But they might try to follow him one night if he went out to heal someone to call the cops. Shit. He had to turn this around somehow get the subject off of him before they pressed him for information he couldn't give. Anger would do it. As much as he didn't want to start a fight with his friends, it would shift the pressure away from him. Oh, I'm hiding something? Tommy snapped, letting his exhausted frustration bleed into his voice. That's fucking bold of you two to say. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Tubbo asked, narrowing his eyes. It means I know you guys are still keeping something from me. Tommy exclaimed. You tried to say it was the marriage shit, but I know that's not all of it. You're still acting dodgy as fuck around me and it pisses me off, but I want to trust that if you're not telling me something, it's for a good goddamn reason. We're not hiding- oh, That's bullshit and you know it, Tubbo. Tommy snapped again, cutting Tubbo off. If you're allowed to have secrets, then why am I not allowed to have my own? Tommy, we're just worried about you, Rondo said in a weak attempt to calm things down. I appreciate the concern, but if you needed to know this, I would tell you. I'm not pressing you for your secrets, why can't you do the same for me? For once, Tommy's anger was short-lived. His fatigue was making itself painfully known, and all he wanted to do now was go to sleep. 
Tubbo opened his mouth to say something, but Rombu put a hand on his shoulder and gave him a look. There was a silent exchange between them, and after a beat, Tubbo sighed and dropped his shoulders. See, there it is again, Tommy pointed out. You two and your fucking silent conversations that I'm never a part of. It's not like that, Ranbu tried to argue. Sure it's not. It's not like we're supposed to be best friends or anything. Now that was what hit the mark. Both Ranbu and Tubbo's expressions darkened at that, and Tommy knew he'd ended the conversation then and there. As much as he hated saying something like that, it was true. They were supposed to be a trio. The three of them against the world. But lately it had felt like there was a glass wall separating him from Tubbo and Ronbu, and neither of them cared enough to try and break through it. Fine, keep your secrets, Tubbo snapped after a few beats of silence. He pushed to his feet and stormed past Tommy, shoving his shoulder as he went. I'm going to bed. Rombu, you're taking the bed with me tonight. Rombu seemed as though he wanted to say more, his mismatched eyes filled with worry and sadness as he watched Tubbo walk off. But a few moments passed, and Rombu apparently decided listening to Tubbo was the better option. Sleep well, Tommy. He offered softly as he passed by him. Then, without another word, he shut the bedroom door behind him, leaving Tommy alone in the living room. Tommy should have been more upset. He should have gone up to that bedroom door and shouted his apologies from the other side. He should have tried to smooth things out, to try and keep the weight of the secrets they all held from tearing their trio apart. But Tommy was tired. So instead, he just turned out the lights in the living room, curled up under a blanket on the couch, and ignored the way the closed bedroom door felt like it was taunting him.